music producer, singer songwriter, activist, and lead singer for the show stopping group, The Suffers. They've garnered some life changing gigs over the last little while on spots like The Late Show with David Letterman, The Daily Show with Trevor Noah, and whose albums have amassed critical acclaim from NPR Music, The Guardian, Rolling Stone. To name drop a few you may have heard of. Wow, you know, we're just really so excited to be here with you today. Cam Franklin, everyone, thank you so much for spending some time with us. You've just had a busy weekend with the launch of It Starts With Love. So congratulations. Or what does that title mean, mean to you specifically? Uh, that title to me references what it takes to survive in this band. Yeah. Uh, every day that we show up to do this, we never know uh, what surprises are going to be there, what traumas are going to emerge, you know, what wins or losses are going to happen. But we know that we all have a shared love for the music, for the show, for the performance. And for us to get to that place that we love so much, we have to go through all of these obstacles together. Um, but we wouldn't do it if we didn't love it. This was a dream album for me to work mm -hmm. on. And, um, the title really is nothing without the team, you know? Yeah. My favorite was uh, Don't Bother Me. Um, could you could describe a little bit of the musical inspiration behind that track? Uh, yeah, that one was uh, co-written with my friend, uh, Johan Karlberg of The Very Best out of Sweden. And uh, when he first sent it to me, uh, he was kind of like referencing more disco gospel. And mm. when I introduced it to the band, you know, with our sound, it yeah. it went from disco to more almost like a Miami sound machine. Mm. And I decided I wanted to lean more into that when we went into the studio where it's like, let's not pop this up, you mm. know, like yeah. the, song, the song itself is a great just without lyrics without whatever the demo was a great song but yeah. lyrically lyrically it is it is about drinking too much and having a good time <laughs> and you know being unforgiving about being selfish about mm. like leave me alone yeah. i'm here i'm here with my friends That's right. my friend's probably going to do something stupid tonight and i'm going to make fun of her <laughs> and we're going to keep you know having a good time as the night rolls on um, and I wanted that part to be so simple because the music was so uh, mm. complex, right? Yeah. Johan had actually sent me the song at the end, I believe, of 2015 or mid-2015. Oh, wow. And it didn't make the last record. And so when we started working on this third record, that was the first demo that was on my brain. I was like- You knew it, you're pulling it I, back in. I was like, I love y'all. And uh, I know we will have many more songs coming to the, the ring, but yeah. this, this one I'm prepared to fight yeah. for. Why do you feel it's so important to release this right now, especially during Black Music Month? It's a very honest album. Uh, that very much so focuses and criticizes the state of our industry uh, and art as a whole, not just music, but yeah. everything from journalism to racism, sexism, gen the gender pay gap, everything, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's overdue. You know, we, we often hear about how music consumers don't want to listen to full albums. And I think that's bullshit. And I think that's just the music industry trying to dumb down hmm. uh, the, the average music fan, which, you know, when I talk to them every night at the concerts, instead of assuming what they like, yeah. they're always asking for more music, right? Yeah. But the theme that kept coming up was the truth, the truth, the hmm. truth. We want more of the truth. We want more of the truth. I had a real random run in. Um, probably right before we went into the studio. So this was like August, 2019. Yeah. Uh, Dave Chappelle was in town, went to two of the shows. We all were all backstage. And uh, my friend, Saman tells Dave, oh, you need to listen to Cam's music, blah, blah, mm. blah, 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 blah. And the next day I come back and they've listened to him and his uh, opener, Mo, uh, Mo Amer. Uh, listen to both records. And he's like, I loved your music. Um, my only note is that you need to be more truthful. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what? Like, yeah, I was kind of like, I was kind of <laughs> irritated in the moment when he said that. But 
him saying that two days later, another artist that I really respected um, said something similar. Mm-hmm. And, you know, last year I interviewed, I interviewed Mavis Staples uh, for an interview right before she did a show here in Houston. And she talked about using the truth as a weapon in mm-hmm. songwriting, you know, yeah. and at that point I've written articles, I've given talks, I've sat on panels. I'm really tired of talking about racism. I'm really tired of talking about sexism. I'm really tired of talking about a lot of things. I'm not going to stop talking about them. Of course. um, Because I know it makes a lot of my peers uncomfortable to talk about these issues. And I've definitely been a victim uh, at my shows in the past of shut up and sing when Mm. I've had the nerve to bring up stuff. And so I decided to take note and put everything I want to say into the music. It's been really terrifying Mm. to write about these topics and to actually record them. And I've had, you know, early on, some people, Cam, are you sure you want to write? Are you sure you want to put that out? Are you sure you, are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? And I'm like, if it makes you uncomfortable because it's the truth, then yeah, I want to put it out. While I feel as though, yes, you know, people really got introduced to a lot of the issues that were happening through the Black Lives Matter movement. Yeah, it is something that it's always been here, right? Yes. Yeah, like the black squares of 2020, uh, it put up by so many people in our industry who have yet to make significant changes in how they hire, how they sign, yeah. how they uh, manage, how they bring people into the fold, how they book. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. it it is not just about black folks. You know, when yeah. I started talking about racism it wasn't just about how I was being treated. I am in a multi-cultural band. Yeah. You know, we go in certain parts of the country, they don't mess with me. They're looking at the brown people in my band crazy. You know, it's, it's something that if we don't talk about it, when we are in the thick of it yeah. and have to experience it, I've been assaulted at shows, I've been cussed out at shows, I've been shorted with my money, you know, Mm. and had I not brought up the things that were happening, it would be, well, why didn't he bring it up? Well, why didn't he say anything? And if it's either you're a bitch because you brought it up and the timing sucked or whatever, insert gaslighting (laughs) explanation here, or you are a liar or a coward because you didn't bring it up or you You didn't speak your truth. You didn't speak speak your truth. And I don't I don't want to feel like I didn't do everything that I could. Right. Yeah. I know that by bringing up what's happening to me as a black woman, it will be so much easier for my brown friends, Mm. for my Asian friends, for my Indian friends who also exist in this industry and also get treated like shit in this industry, who are also underbooked, who are also undervalued. Okay, that's amazing if you're booking Japanese breakfast on every single festival, where are the other Asian artists? Right. That's amazing that you're booking Chicano Batman, where are the other Latin artists? Yes. You know, that's yeah. amazing. You got Black Pumas or you got us on a, on a bill. Where is everybody else? A lot of artists, especially artists at much higher tiers that have been signed to labels that God knows what the contract says. Right. They can't bring this shit up. Yeah. So who's going to do it? I realized that if I got my stuff together and almost built up the strength that I needed to be able to respond with confidence and to know like there's a big difference between being disrespectful Mm -hmm. and taking a moment to be honest. How Do We Heal came as a release of a lot of anxiety and fear and depression after having watched black body after black body be shot up by the police on my phone um and it became something that i realized people were getting numb to Mm -hmm. and it got to a point where i found myself getting angry on tour we drive through places that we had to drive through to get to places right driving through ferguson and like realizing like i'm hot when i shouldn't be hot like i'm just like 
getting all these feelings and I'm like, oh, and realizing that it wasn't that I was angry about where we were. I was angry because I didn't feel safe right. and I didn't feel safe because <laughs> what I was seeing and what right. we still continue to see, yes. you know, like we are not even a month removed from 10 black people being killed simply for being black at a grocery store in Buffalo that still is a food desert right now because of what happened there. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's something that lives so deeply in my mind mm -hmm. because that, <laughs> that's who I am, yeah. you know, human being first, mm -hmm. but because I live in America, I'm not an American first, I'm black first. Right. And to not be able to exist with a sense of security when I go places, simply because of what's happening in our society right now, mm -hmm. um, I needed to release that. So I wasn't yeah. holding on to it every night, right? Yeah. And every night that I sing it on stage, I feel a release mm -hmm. of, I'm saying it, so it's real. Right. I'm saying I'm singing it, so it's real. I'm singing the truth. Maybe somebody will hear me because mm -hmm. something I really wanted to stay away from was blaming anybody in the song and more so focusing on how, as a Black community, there has never really been that much space to do much healing mm -hmm. because it's always a hard reset. Right. You right. know? Yeah. Even just this past year, watching the pushback of them uh, and push them referring to our elected leaders hesitating to yeah. sign the anti-lynching bill. Like what? Yeah. What? You know, and, yeah. and that's, and that's like where I exist sometimes where I'm mm -hmm. like, it's, it's no longer, can y'all please it's what's wrong with you. Right. And you know, this next generation, I turn 35 tomorrow, the generation after me, they're not as nice as I am when it comes to asking what is wrong with you? Yeah. Because they're the generation that grew up, you know, having to learn how to do active shooter drills in their schools. Right. You know, that's, which is a whole other topic oh, that absolutely. I've been like very deeply focused on um, mm. having lived in the state where all of these young babies were just murdered, but also yes. living in a state where this isn't the first time this happened. Oh yeah, you absolutely. Know? Santa Fe is just, 30 minutes south of where I am right now, mm -hmm. uh, Santa Fe High School. And, you know, serving on the board of Headcount with uh, my friend, Matt, who is a, a survivor of Parkland, you know, mm -hmm. and just continuing to meet people who have gone through this. And eventually we're going to get to a point where we all know somebody. I now know multiple people yeah. who, who have been survivors of these shootings. And it's, thank, thank God, you know, yes. but it's like, I now realize, great, you know, as an artist, I can do my best to try and show up for them yeah. uh, with my voice. But right now, my, my headspace has been focused on writing music about this topic. So that yeah. uh, next record will probably have some of that on there. But it's, it's an everyday fight to figure out how to, how to heal. I think that people assume that by changing the laws to make things safer, everything's gonna be fixed right. in our society. People yeah. will still die from guns. People will still you know, murder people. Like those mm -hmm. things aren't gonna change, exactly. but it's like, it'll be a lot harder for them to do it so quickly. We're at a certain point now in the United States where we have seen that it doesn't matter who dies. Uh, if you have money and you have power uh, right now, mm -hmm. you seem to be the person controlling things. Um, and, and that's, that's a really, really sad and really, really, really uh, unfortunate. But it's, I read something the other day on Twitter that just mentioned uh, the Vegas shooting to, I have two friends that survived that, you know, and just listening to them talk about how, uh, almost 50 something people died at that. And all of the people that uh, 
survived and how we rarely mention the survivors and how right. they are impacted and how they have to, you know, live these really just traumatized yes. lives uh, mm -hmm. because, because nothing seems to change. And so, yeah. um, you know, <laughs> I, I am trying to pick my battles with how I give my time back. Course. um be it through voting be it through speaking out against racism sexism and now i never thought i'd have to speak out uh against gun violence to this degree but here we are yada yada is one of those tracks that has another incredible message so how can you know through this through this album and through this track how how can the music industry change do you feel and how can we kind of help as a whole well yada yada Nanya and I'm Not Afraid were all written on the same night. Mm. Uh, I had yes. someone in Nashville just try to push me to my limit. Yes. And, you know, therapy exercises, right? Yes. Um, I think that as a music industry, if we really, really, really want to help not just women, not just Black people, not just new artists, legacy mm -hmm. artists, and this is more so directed to the non-artists, right? Yeah. Um, people have to listen and trust the art. Yes. People have to listen to the music mm. and before they give their two cents on things, before they dismiss things. And people have to trust that in every generation of artists, if you are a true, industry head if you're a true exec whatever mm -hmm. every generation has that one artist few artists that will make you forget everything you thought you knew about mm -hmm. how this industry works how it can grow um and to trust that you will never know everything yes. about right. this industry because it will constantly evolve i'm really tired of it being looked at as an untouchable industry yeah because yeah the way it's sold to a lot of us now, you don't really have to be that talented. That's that's one part of it. Right. Uh, hard work is a very, very big part of it. Good mm -hmm. team, a nice budget doesn't hurt either. Yeah, but, absolutely. But we've been sold so much nonsense and so much nonsense about what it takes mm -hmm. um, that I thought it would be nice to write an updated version with yeah. some real honesty about it, about what it is. You know, mm -hmm. verse one, referencing the fact that we are being told how this industry works by people that have never written songs in their life. Verse two, mm. being told uh, <laughs> how it used to be, meaning like, look, you either had to change everything about yourself right. or you could sleep your way up to the top and yeah, that there you go. That's, right? that's one path, yeah. And that was the path. Way, it's not that yeah. way anymore, but once yeah. upon a time, that's how it was, right? Yeah. And then verse three, about how <laughs> you can be way up here, way up here, and everybody's in your face. And then whatever goes wrong, you come down here, hmm. no one knows you anymore. Yeah. And if you are one of the few to come back up again, it then becomes, oh, where have you been? Good to see you. Oh, <laughs> I know I had no contribution in helping you get out of that pile of you know, lowness you were in, but right. so glad to, that you're back. See you yeah. at drink. Yeah, we'll you see. Know? We'll catch up later. Let's link. Yeah. You know, it, it becomes that. You know, and I, I feel as though if I had had this song as a young woman, mm. I'd be like, I'm ready. You know, and so <laughs> I, I want to to empower yes. these artists because. Yes. We need support too. <laughs> I just want to say it's been such an honor speaking with you today. Um, everyone who's viewing, please make sure that you are following the sufferers on all social media channels to stay in the loop. Check out those videos, as Cam mentioned. And of course, tastemakers, if you haven't already, go and friggin' stream. Don't bother me in the player now. Stream it, download it, tell your friends about it. And Cam, I hope to see you at, uh, at a show sometime soon, but thank you so much for your time. Yes. And uh, it's been such a pleasure. Thank you again. Yes, thank you.